Hi everyone, I'm Rosie and welcome to Vox Yoga. So today's video is all about fascia, anatomy trains and the voice. So this channel is all about connecting the body and the voice, considering the voice as a whole instrument. So if we understand the role that fascia plays in the body, then we really can start to think about how everything truly is connected. And in order to consider our voice as our instrument, we need to consider the body as well. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what fascia is, what anatomy trains are, and how we can think about them in relation to our voice. Now, this is such a huge topic, so obviously I'm giving you the very basics. However, there are some great books that you can read and some good resources, so I will link to those in the description box below and pop them at the end of this video if you'd like to find out more. So fascia is a web of connective tissue that runs through the entire body. It's a silvery white substance, extremely thin, imagine like cling film, made mostly of collagen, and it wires everything together and surrounds, penetrates the bones, muscles, ligaments, organs, connecting everything in the body. It's a complex, self-regulating organ that you can think of as your soft skeleton. And it's really a net, one continuous web that shows that everything is separate, but everything is connected. A little fun fact that I got from my Yoga Anatomy coloring book, which is a great book if you're interested in yoga and the body. Fun theory. Some believe that if you could magically remove the skeleton from a body standing upright, the fascia on its own could maintain the posture. We may never know. So fascia is often classified into three groups. The first is subcutaneous or superficial fascia. This is a fibrous web of connective tissue that sits just below the skin and this allows the skin and the muscle to slide and work normally against each other. The next is deep muscle fascia, and this is a more dense, more organized layer of connective tissue. This covers all of the muscles, bones, nerves, and blood vessels, and acts as a sort of body stocking. And the third is visceral fascia, which surrounds and supports all the organs in the body. So a great way to think about fascia is like the layers of an orange. You peel the skin away, you get that very thin, pithy web surrounding it. And then underneath that, you get the different layers with um, the muscles, the organs, or I don't know the names of it with an orange, but I'm sure you can picture it. So fascia, if you were going into an operating studio, um, studio, I'm such a singer, an operating medical room, whatever it's called. Um, then when they cut through the skin, then the next thing that they come to and cut away would be the fascia. So anatomy trains are how the fascia is linked within the body. And there's certain lines that we can follow. And by releasing these um, anatomy trains, releasing the fascia in the body, it can help to free up the body but also see how these connections can work together. So um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about the anatomy trains. So you can see how they work together in the body and I will show you an image on the screen. Um, and that will help you to see that really from the foot up to the head, things are connected. And that's why when we think about our tongue, jaw, larynx as a singer, we want to consider what comes below as well. So as I said, I'll put some pictures on the screen whilst I talk about this. And then afterwards, I will give you some ideas and ways of how you could release this fascia if you're feeling a little bit stuck. So we'll start with the superficial back line, and this balances the front and the back of the body. It's a real core stabilizer, and you can see that it runs from the back, the heel of the foot, all the way up the hamstrings, across the pelvis, up the back with the erector spinae and the paraspinal muscles, and then up to the back of the neck and the back of the skull. We then have the superficial front line, and this is one major um, anatomy train that helps with our head forward posture. So it's really vital for singers to um, have freedom and flexibility in this area. So you can see it runs from the feet 
up the quads, over the um, fronts of the abdominals, up over the front of the rib cage, the sternum, and ends at the sternocleidomastoid muscles, which are those large muscles at the side of the neck. It also plays a role with anterior and posterior pelvic balance, which is the way that our pelvis tilts. I talk about that a lot on this channel, how um, having that freedom in the pelvis and the hips helps to stabilize our core and allow us to have better breathing, which of course um, is very useful for singers. Then if we look at the lateral line, we can see again, it runs from the feet to the outside of the leg, outside of the hip. It then covers the internal and external obliques and the internal and external intercostals. So it plays a big part in the movement of the rib cage. It then runs up to the side of the neck again, so plays a big role in stabilizing the neck. If we now look at the spiral line, which moves across the body, this helps to allow the upper and lower tracts to act independently. And it has a huge role in rotations of the rib cage. It helps to balance the abdominals and provide stability in the pelvis. And then finally, we have the deep front line, which is the complete core of the body. It stabilizes the midline, helps to stabilize the pelvis as well, um, providing pelvic floor balance. This also covers the psoas muscle. I'm gonna pop a quick link to one of my videos on the screen that has a little bit about the psoas and its role with the voice. Um, it also then has three tracks from the pelvis up to the skull. It helps to balance our respiratory and pelvic diaphragm and also helps with stability of the head and the neck. And so many of those things, of course, are organs, muscles that we consider a lot when we are thinking about our voice use. So, of course, it's impossible for us to say, oh, I think my fascia feels a bit stuck around my ribcage. But it may be that you're experiencing less mobility and you feel that a little bit of movement could help to free up the body. And it's likely then that you're going to be releasing some fascia. It can take a bit of time to release fascia. It's not an instant thing, but we know that just by moving the body, we can help to find a lot more freedom. So how can we help to release this and think about the connections in the body a bit more? So one great thing are myofascio release balls, which I have some here to show you. And you can just use regular massage, exercise balls. Um, and again, there are different exercises you can do. You can see that the, so many of those anatomy trains start at the feet. So using the um, release balls on the feet is fantastic. We are always working from the ground up. So starting at the feet is a great place to start. You can then use the balls on different part of the body, particularly um, the hamstrings, the glutes, um, on the back, they can feel great. Shoulders, neck. You can also use your hands, a little bit of self-massage. Again, I speak about this on the channel. I'm sure I've got something else I can link to there for that. <laughs> so just using the hands maybe around the neck to subtly get into um, the fascia there. Of course, this is Vox Yoga. So yoga is a fantastic way to release the fascia and stretch those whole lines. And there are certain postures that can really help to stretch each of those anatomy trains. So I started with the superficial back line and forward bends in yoga are fantastic to stretch this. Forward folds, child pose, and particularly downward facing dog, which stretches the whole superficial back line. Superficial front line, again, back bends are great to stretch this. So if you imagine in Sphinx or Cobra pose, you can really feel that stretch along the whole of the front line. The lateral line, you might have guessed, side bends, um, anything like extended side angle is fantastic, opening up the whole side body. Spiral line, of course, twists, also pigeon pose is fantastic as well. And then finally, the deep front line, that deep core. So um, you could use something like tree pose, again, where you're standing on one leg to stretch that whole deep front, you need a bit of core engagement, or things like bird dog, where we're touching the knee to the elbow to work that inner deeper core. But of course, it really is just exploring this as a concept. 
taking what you connect to, you relate to, and thinking, oh, actually, I've been finding when I sing a little bit of um, maybe stickiness, um, ten excess tension in one area. Maybe if I try some fascial release or think about the body a bit more as a whole, can help to free up that part and then help to free up the voice. It's also awesome to try some sounding in any of those yoga postures where you are releasing any of those anatomy trains and lines. So maybe I should do a yoga practice on this channel for that soon. <laughs> So as I mentioned, some further reading if any of this interests you. Um, anatomy trains, you have to go to Tom Myers. He um, has done so much research and released um, so many books and papers about this. So check out his website and I went in with the most entry level book and it's so great, this workbook which is called Myofascial Meridians Structure and Function. So I highly recommend that. Another one is David Lazondak, Fascia, what it is and why it matters. Um, I'll also just link to my yoga anatomy coloring book because it's such good fun. And again, it just helps you to see how everything is connected, whether you're interested in yoga or not. The Vox Yoga YouTube channel has yoga for singers practices, stretches for singers, vocal health and much more. So thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.